Good evening. Never in a million years would I have ever thought that I would be sharing this kind of story. When I say this kind of story, I mean a story of domestic violence. A story that almost killed me and sent me and sent my six children into foster care. I actually spent most of my teenage years watching my older sister be abused. I had front row seats watching her fight off her abuser. So many times I was caught in the crossfire of their fights. Yelling and screaming would always turn physical. So by 18 years old, I had seen all the dysfunction a person of my age should see. Surely I could never end up in that kind of relationship. I knew better than that. At least that is what I thought. 10 years later, I met the person who I thought I would spend the rest of my life with. He was my best friend, my husband, and the father of my six children. It didn't start off bad. It was actually really, really nice. Things were so good. I don't really remember when things started to take a turn. It's like one day he was my best friend and the next day he was not. After a while, we were literally arch enemies. First, it was jealousy, then lies, then arguments, and finally, the hitting. It is like the more he lied and cheated, the more I became his target. The fights became more frequent and they also became more violent. Slapping, shoving, hitting, pushing. Those words became my everyday life. I would wake up in a nightmare always afraid to start the day because I didn't know what it entailed. What was it going to be like today? Would I find out about another woman or would someone be picking me up off the floor? This went on for several years. It became my normal. It became my life. No matter how many times I asked him to leave or kicked him out, he would always come back. It was like this vicious cycle that I could not free myself from. Honestly, I was just too beaten down to ever get back up. Until the last fight, the last fight I will never forget. That fight shook my whole world. It almost took my life. I was beaten so badly that his boot was imprinted on my arm. If the beating was not enough, he then hit me with his car and left me in a puddle of water when it was freezing outside. The neighbors saw me lying there and called the police. I woke up drenched in muddy water. The police arrived, not sure what was going on. They searched my house, saw my bruises, and told me that I better get a protective order because social services would soon be calling. I knew that wasn't good. What I didn't know was that day how bad it would turn out, nor did I know that I was pregnant again. My husband left that day with our only source of income, our, and our electricity was turned off that day after he left. The very next day, CPS arrived, and when they arrived, I looked terrible. I was bruised and in pain, I was disoriented from the attack. I was overwhelmed by what was happening. I was a mess. And to top that off, our power was cut off. And all of this combined made me unstable in the eyes of CPS. My mother was there with us that day and CPS asked if it was possible for us to go live with her. She said yes. They did a home visit and it was approved. And my mother took me and my five children in. And while I was not being investigated for child abuse, I still had this open CPS case and still had certain requirements that I had to do. I did everything they asked me to do to show them that I could provide a stable and safe home. The case was supposed to be closed on February 5th, 2019, but the paperwork to close it just never got done. Then on April 20th, I went into labor 
And when it was time to deliver the baby, my mother kept my kids who were 12, 5, 4, 3, and 2 at the time. She watched them while I was in the hospital having my baby. I guess, be, I guess because I had this open CPS case immediately after the baby was born, CPS had me tested for drugs and I tested positive for amphetamines. I knew this could not be true. My doctor even told them that it was due to the ephedra that had been given when I delivered the baby. Both the baby and I were retested and the test came back negative, but it was too late. CPS took my children from my mother's home where we had lived for the last six months and took them into custody. They never even gave my mother or my sisters the opportunity to foster my children. My oldest was so scared she started having a panic attack. How do you explain what was happening when you don't even understand yourself? All I knew was that instead of recognizing that I was the victim, I was now being painted as the perpetrator. I was now an unfit mother because my husband beat me and left me with no safe place to call home. My children were taken from me while I was giving birth to my sixth baby. And then they took him too. My newborn baby was taken from me that day, that moment, and placed in foster care with a stranger. We never got to be skin to skin. I was not given the opportunity to nurse him, to bond with him, to simply be with him for a few days, not even a few moments, to let him know I was his mother and that I loved him. They took him and never even told me what happened or where he was or who had him. He was just gone. I was discharged from the hospital and told I, was, I had to leave. I was in such a state of shock. I left the hospital alone, walking. I left in a hospital gown and walked three miles to my mother's home. With my C-section torn open, I didn't even know it. All I knew is that my baby was gone and my children were gone. My six children were placed in three different foster families. I was allowed to see them once a week for two hours in a tiny room, not big enough for us all, not big enough for six children. The CPS staff watched us from the other side of the glass window. That day in the hospital when, the, when my kids were taken away, I asked them what I could do to get them back. And so it began, a very long road of doing anything and everything CPS told me to do. When all I had really done was fall for a man who stopped loving me and did not value or respect me and did not allow me or my children to be safe from violence in our own home. I did everything they asked me to do and more when I met Safe Alliance. No, that can't be right. Sorry. Is that right? I did everything they asked me to do and more. This was when I met Safe Alliance. During my darkest hour, they became my partner through it all. During my first case with CPS, I enrolled in some classes I was required to take, but I signed up for every program I could find at SAFE. Anything that I thought might help us be a stronger family. After I lost my kids, I was enrolled in SAFE Futures, a program designed to bring families with open CPS cases back together. Too often, kids are sent into foster care for reasons just like mine. When the violence gets so bad, you have no choice but to leave. With no income, not being stable, and you can't be homeless and keep your children. Through SAFE's counseling program, I was able to do one-on-one -on -one therapy and group sessions with others that were going through the same thing. This helped me be proud of myself. This helped me be proud of myself instead of being ashamed. I was finally out of this toxic relationship, which meant I could focus on myself and my children. 
I utilized one of SAFE's housing programs to find a safe place to live and recognize and received help with a deposit, which became a turning point in my fight to get my children back. I needed safe housing before they would ever consider returning my children. And I needed a job. I had been in the apartment industry years ago and found a job, a really good one, but lost it because of my visitation schedule. It would take hours to get there and back, but I wasn't willing to miss a visit with my children. They needed me. They needed to know I loved them and missed them and would do everything I could to get them back. When I lost that first job, I didn't know what I was going to do. I went to work for a temp agency that specializes in apartments and leasing. I was given an assignment with a woman who owned several properties. I went in every day and quickly we began to talk and get to know each other. I told her what was happening in my life and how I was working to get my children. The next thing I know, she asked me to come on full time as her property manager. With that, I had a safe home and a good job. I had completed parenting classes and counseling. I had done everything I needed to do. And in January 2020, nine months after my children were taken away from me, I got my children back. My first two kids came in February. Two more finally came in March and my case was closed. And my children, all of my children were home with me. I was told at this event, you usually hear from survivors of child abuse, young adults who have survived the abuse and the system that is supposed to help them and protect them. Tonight, I represent six children who may have spent nine months in foster care, but foster care will not be their story. Their story is a home filled with love and family. My kids are home tonight because SAFE was there for me when I needed them. My kids will not be products of the foster care system because SAFE stood beside me and gave me the tools, the skills, and the encouragement that I needed when I was tired. My kids know their mother loves them and will do anything for them. My kids will not be your speaker one day, and for that, I am eternally grateful. Thank you for supporting SAFE and the programs that bring families back together.